Right, hi there everyone. In this video, we're going to go over um, question 3.3, which is here, uh, which is just one reason for the uneven shape of the coastline. We'll then go on to question 3.4 and 3.5, okay? So for this question, you need to give one reason, one idea um, as to why this coastline is not, is not straight. As you can see, you've got um, here, uh, land which is cropping out into the sea and um, then there is a bay here and then you have a band of rock um, which is jutting out into the sea um, and then it goes towards the southeast. Now um, the reason why some coastlines are uneven um, like the one on the OS map and also the one the diagram at the bottom here is because that coastline is what we call discordant and that is where you have alternating bands of more resistant and less resistant rock e.g Swanish Bay. So a more resistant rock is something which erodes slowly um, and it's quite difficult to erode. Um, a less resistant rock is something that erodes easily um, so it's less difficult to erode. So if you have a look at Swanage uh, Bay okay so from the north to the south of that diagram um, we would refer to that as being Discord because you've got uh, clay and sand, which is soft, then a band of chalk, which is hard. Uh, here you have old Harry and his wife, who's a stump. Um, then you have a band of clay and sand, which is a soft rock. And then lastly, here you've got a band of uh, limestone, which is a more resistant rock. Okay. So it's because you've got these, either there are these soft rock bands which the that the the land is the, the coastline is uneven okay from the west here to the southeast we have a band of limestone and um, we would refer to this coastline as being concordant as it's all the same type of rock okay so for this question you do not need to write um more than one sentence you just need to say that um, there could be different types of rock um, or it could be a discordant coastline where there are more resistant hard rocks and also uh, less resistant soft rocks. Okay. If you want to go over how headlands and bays form, um, I'd recommend this video here um, in the top right. Okay. Right, let's go to question 3.4 then. So 3.4 asks you to use both figures there, figure nine and 10, um, to decide which direction the photographer was facing um, when they took that picture um, in figure 10. They've given you the grid reference as well for the, the grid square, which is 6639. Okay, so you go along the corridor to 66, up to three nine that's the bottom left corner for the box you're interested in so it's this box we're looking at so you need to work out which direction compass direction that photographer was facing you've got some multiple choice options here a to d okay so what i would advise is to look for the finer detail in the photograph um, look at the shape of the cosine and see if you could you can find that shape within that uh, grid square so I can see here in the in the foreground of the photograph, which is the front of the photograph, um, it seems to go um, inward slightly. There seems to be an, in a small inlet, perhaps a cove here. Okay, and then the land just out into the sea. Okay, and I would assume it goes back in over here as I can't see anything else in that photograph. So have a look at the map. Okay, um, have a look at the 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 grid square and try and gauge what you can see in that grid square and see if what marries up with that photograph. So I can see here that that area of land there is the same shape as in the photograph here. Okay, it juts out. So I would assume the photographer was stood around about here. Now in the photograph, I can see, of course, um, bolt tail and also um, the photographer was looking out to see. So let's have a look at the compass rows at the top. I would assume that they would have been facing the northwest. Okay, so the answer to this question was B, northwest. Now let's practice a few more 
Okay, so I'm gonna give you a few scenarios, just pause the video. Um, once I've set you the question, so you've got time to answer. Right, so if I took a photograph um, and I was on the golf course here, and in that photograph, I could, uh, you could see the cliff edge and then the sea here. Okay, you could also see the castle. What direction would I have been facing? Pause the video. Okay, so the answer would be the southwest. Now, let's imagine I'm at this hotel. I'm looking out my bedroom window, taking a photograph of what I can see. And in the distance, I can see, um, let's see, we can see this road. We can see this rural landscape here. Um, what direction would I have been facing if I could see that from the hotel window? Okay, pause, video. Okay, the answer would be I would be facing to the east. So big tip, look for the finer detail and try and match the shape of the, the landforms in the photograph. Um, or it could be a human feature like a settlement to the OS map. Okay. So finally, 3.5, uh, the question was this. So name one process of erosion that may affect these cliffs. Okay, you could have named any type of erosion um, other than attrition, okay? So let's think about why that is. Now, these types of erosion um, are to do with the, the impact the waves have on a cliff base. So a hydraulic action is where water um, crashes, the wave crashes against the base of the cliff. In doing so, it compresses air within the cracks as the water enters the cracks, causing these cracks to become bigger, um, and so it weakens the cliff. Abrasion is that sandpapering effect, so the pebbles entrained within the flow of the, of the wave will be rubbing against the base of the cliff, wearing it away. And then solution is where there is a reaction between the seawater and the cliff base. Now, attrition would not have been accepted as an answer because that is only to do with how the individual pebbles collide and break. It's, it's not to do with the erosion of the cliff. It's two pebbles or sometimes more entrained in the flow of the water, banging together, clashing together and chipping parts of the rock off. OK, let's have a look. At an example so this pebble here is quite well rounded so that tells me that this has been entrained in the water's flow in the sea uh, for quite some time because it's, it's become quite smooth telling me that it has collided into many the other pebbles over time okay so attrition is quite simply where two pebbles hit each other and chip um, and parts away fragments away. So for this question, as it's the only name, you just need to write down the name of the process. You don't need to tell me what it is. You could have just written hydraulic action or abrasion or solution. And that would have been enough to get you that one mark. OK. Right. So I'm going to stop that video there. If you want to watch um, other videos about maybe 3.6, 3.7, then please go to that one. OK. Thank you for listening, guys.